Well guys, I think this is about as close as I can get us to where we were supposed to be. We aren't quite out of the enemy's scope, but if we can get some fuel, we can get moving again. Cool, cool. Are we going to get some fuel right now? That's a negative. Right now we're just trying to get some breathing space, maybe recoup a little bit. I just need you two to clear the area so we can start rebuilding. Roger, Codger, Dodger. Ray, please don't do that. I'm, I'm not in the mood. Just, just Roger. Oh, come on, Jordan. You gotta keep up morale. Yeah, I know, morale. I'm still real pumped about our victory on the moon, but we've had a couple days of travel and... It's a mess. I was getting tired of being cooped up on a ship, and I am now excited to be cooped up in a robot! Yes! Tell me what I am to kill. That would be everything, starting at Nav Alpha all the way up to Nav Gaul. <laughs> yes! I will choose to obey these orders. Great. Hey Jordan, shouldn't I be the one giving orders to Peyton since I'm the sergeant now? Not my orders, no. Ray, you pick your team and you pick your targets. One of the advantages we have over Oligopomart is that we're not bloated with idiots at the top trying to give orders. It's really not going to help us out to have people competing to be part of the command hierarchy. It is so pure and white snowing here. Yes, it is like the winter holiday. We should pick the tree, take the tree back to enemy command, yes, and then light the tree. Oh, I get it, it's like a devil entendre. <laughs> Oh, by the way, we got one of these little recon guys. We don't have Tito with us, so I don't have eyes on the ground. Ray, can you be a bit more specific about what you're engaging? The computer says it's a raven, which is neat because it does look like a bird. Soon to be black like a raven as well. If you would just hold still! Yes. A raven? Well, that explains why I can't see anything up here. That's about as light as they come, so you guys ought to be fine. Keep going with your sweep. But keep an eye out, there might be more out there than I can see. Those guys aren't built for combat, but they do screw up long-range sensors, so that's gonna be a problem. If we had Tito here, could we see everything better? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is war. You know, we've got a machine in the back room that stops other machines from going ding. That's because the enemy has machines that make our devices go ding, and they listen for that ding, and if they hear it, they find us. Technological warfare is so confusing. Why don't we just take the bells out of our machines? Because if you ask the manufacturer for a version of the machine without a bell in it, they charge you a ton of extra money. If you try to get the bell out on your own time, it costs a ton of man hours, so it's actually a lot cheaper just to buy a machine that stops other machines from going ding. That is madness! Yes! Someone should start a new company that does not include the bell. Well, nobody can do that. Any kind of company that gets successful enough to compete like that would just be bought by Oligopolmart. If they don't want to sell, then Oligopolmart just sues them for the patent. But if there is no competitors, then who are we buying the weapons from? See, that's the crazy thing. There aren't any more weapons manufacturers in this side of the universe, so we are actually buying from Oligopolmart. That's one of our big weaknesses, is that we keep buying from them. And one of their big weaknesses is that they keep selling to us. Okay. No, that can't be right, because how does this work? If we attack one of their installations, then the price of the robots goes up, right? Uh, not exactly. This is really convoluted, so try to bear with me. Okay, starting off, under Oligopomart, the rich have a 0% tax rate. Of course, only the top owners of Oligopomart are really classified as rich. And, because they're also the politicians in charge, people send them a lot of gifts and money and stuff like that, so they really don't have to buy anything. Now, they do give out loans and investments, but you notice that they expect a return on those things. So technically, that stuff isn't going back into the economy. Not totally, anyway. So, when you get down to the bottom line, Oligopomart is a black hole for money. You put money in, and it just vanishes. That means that for the ordinary citizen living in Oligopomart, the entire economy is based on debt. Since our planet was one of the ones most recently conquered, we did have real money for a little while, but I think that's over with. Wait, I'm confused. What do you mean if the economy is debt-based? I mean that Oligopomart owns 100% of the wealth around the Oligopomart sector. They achieved perfect wealth disparity, and then just kept going. Now now the entire economy is based on debt caps and your credit rating, and everyone just kind of trades debt instead of money. Oh, okay. So, how do we fix that when we take over the world again? That's kind of a tough question, because based on my reading so far, it looks like the universe's top quantum economists haven't figured out a solution to the problem yet. Basically, if Oligopomart takes over your planet, you're screwed. Oh man, that is... that is butts. I know how to solve the butts problem. Yes! We destroy Oligopomart and take their monies! Peyton, do you really think that quantum economists would get involved if the answer were as simple as violence? Yes, it is because the quantum economist is the nerd! Oh, speaking of nerds, just to let you know, Ray, it looks like Private Sydney locked herself in her room after she heard that you didn't take her on this mission. Oh my gosh, you know, she kept going on about how she doesn't belong as a pilot. I know, I know, but apparently the idea was growing on her, and now this is like a huge blow to her self-esteem. How am 
I supposed to deal with someone like that? Come on, uh, just uh, give her a pudding cup or something. Give her pudding for my ration. Ray, she's not four years old. What am I supposed to do? Say, sorry you got fired from your job. Here's a pudding cup. Well, I would be pretty happy with the pudding cup. I don't know. We must try ridicule. Guys, scold her for not accepting the pudding cup. I don't get it. Does she want to be shot at? It's scary out here. I don't think she wants to be in combat. No, I think she just wants to be part of the group. But Jordan, if the group is always in danger, how am I supposed to include her and then have her not be in danger? I don't know. Don't tell me. Tell her. Jordan, I am onto you. You said you are responsible and that we must not compete to delegate. No, you're not supposed to compete to do my job, but Ray is in charge of figuring out the team. But every time she gets in a robot, she makes it explode. Well, then let us give her the robot, the ice, and then load it up with explosives and have her run at the enemy. That sounds really unethical. It is turning her weakness into a strength. Yes, it is good leadership. If you're even considering it, I really should point out that we can't afford to put Sydney in a suicide bot. And for that matter, we don't have the kind of explosives that we need. Guys, we're not gonna make Sydney go on suicide. We need to come up with something where she's useful, like, multiple times. Okay, and no one is trying to drive you towards killing your teammates, but just food for thought on that idea. If Sydney keeps losing robots, she's going to be hurting more than she helps. Also, Sydney eats up the rations. Yes. Over time, we could save rations. Oh my god, you guys, this has got to be the most diabolical conversation I've ever been a part of. If we want to save rations, you can just give half a mind to Sydney. I was only joking. I don't know about Peyton. We must consider the sobering realities. There must be some kind of job that she can do that's safe. Like, I don't know, using a giant robot to move boxes around? I am not gonna give Sydney a robot that cost us 15 billion space monies and then ask her to use it to scoot boxes around. Well, we gotta do something for her, unless you guys just don't want to make eye contact whenever you pass Sydney in the hallways. Uh... Is this an option? Yes. No! No, it is not an option. I am social. I have to interact with people. I'll be the only one talking to her. Guys, we have to get Sydney a job. All right, all right. Maybe we can do something with recon work. Yeah, yeah, do that. That's the kind of thing where, like, if she finds an enemy, she runs away, right? She tells us, but then doesn't doesn't get shot. In a perfect world, maybe, but knowing Sydney's track record so far, I don't really know if we should trust her. She'll be fine. She'll do great. It's not hard to run away from stuff. Plus, it'll give her a chance to get familiar with the controls, and it'll be good for everybody. Hmm. I am sad that Suicide Sydney's scheme is off the table. It had such good alliteration. Yes. Okay, Jordan, we're at the last nav point and everything is pretty much blown up. Good work, guys. Ray, you're really starting to grow into this really well. Anyway, we'll come touch down, see what we can do with the ship, maybe have a look at the area. Maybe we can bum a few parts off of those mechs that you guys brought down. Cool, cool. Maybe you want to send Sydney out with the salvage team so she can protect them? Oh, uh, they really don't need an escort, Ray. Oh, come on. I bet they'll feel good that we're watching after them, you know? Okay, fine. It really doesn't hurt anything. I'll send Sydney out with the salvage teams, and in the meanwhile, you guys come back and get repairs. Later on, I'll send Sydney out to do some scouting. Maybe we'll find some soft targets. 